What's up everybody? Today I'm going to show you how I go from this to this. A simple, classic and elegant makeup look. Perhaps you have a fancy event to attend and you're looking for a simple, classy and elegant makeup look that doesn't require a gazillion steps. This video is for you. The very first step is to prep your skin. I've already moisturized it and I applied a primer. I applied a primer to make sure that the makeup lasts all night long. And now I'm going in with a glow booster. This is a cream one from RMS and let me show you it gives you a very pretty soft glow you see that so I'm gonna apply it here to the high points of my cheek and to the bridge of my nose and I'm just gonna blend it in so this starts to give us a nice glow under our foundation. Next up, brows. I'm just gonna use my Benefit pencil and I'm gonna just fill in certain parts where my hair is more sparse, especially the arches. That's where I need the most help. And I'm gonna do a few hair-like strokes here towards the front. Next, I'm gonna use this is the Fluff Up Brow Wax from Benefit. You can also use a brow gel, whatever works best for you. And this will just help me keep my brows in place. Next up, I'm gonna take my ABH primer, eye primer that is. You can put it on with your finger, with a brush, with a sponge, whatever works best for you. And I'm gonna put it all over my lid. This is going to give me an even canvas to work with and also it will intensify the eyeshadows that we put over it and it will help with longevity. For foundation, I'm going to use the Tom Ford Traceless Foundation Stick. This was, I, I got it 50% off from Sephora, this most recent Black Friday. Such an incredible deal and I got it because I have heard amazing things from this foundation. This is, a, this is my first time using it. We'll see what I think. It's normally $90, which is a ridiculous price, but uh, yeah, 50% off was definitely worth it to me to find out what 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 can this foundation do right why is it so expensive i don't know that it's going to be able to give me the, the coverage that i want let's reapply it pains me to tell you how gorgeous the finish is on this foundation. Truly, my skin looks like skin. It is naturally glowy, just, yeah, it just looks so natural. It is not giving me full coverage. That's okay, I'll just go in and spot conceal certain areas with my concealer a little bit later, but wow. Yeah, this is a truly beautiful formula, wow. Next up is concealer. I'm gonna use this full coverage one from It Cosmetics. And honestly, I'm using this one just because I've been neglecting it. I have not used it in a while. I thought of it because it is full coverage and that is what I want. So I'm gonna take a little bit on my Sephora 71 brush. All right, so I want some here in the inner corners of my eyes. This is where I have darkness. I'm also gonna put a little bit here in the outer corner. And I'm gonna place it, but I'm not going to blend it just yet. I want it to sit. And um, I do that because the longer you let it sit, the more coverage it's going to give you. So I'm just gonna place it here and again. Now I'm gonna move on to other areas of the face. Like here where I have some dark spots. This concealer is thick and creamy, very easy to blend. And like it says, it's full coverage, which is exactly what I want. I'm also putting some concealer on the sides of the nose. Notice that I'm putting my concealer 
more towards either the inner or the outer corner of the eyes because here if, you, if we put it in the middle that's where we have a lot of lines sometimes and um, the more product we put directly on that area the more creases it's gonna cause all right now i'm gonna take my damp sponge and i'm gonna press that foundation in as well as the concealer pressing it into the skin and also it's gonna help with the blend because we want everything to look seamless seamlessly blended and now as i'm blending my under eye concealer i am blending it into the middle part of the eye that we were avoiding earlier because the sponge is going to deposit a light amount of product next i'm going to take a cream bronzer this one is from milk in the shade baked and i'm just gonna draw it here directly on my forehead and I'm gonna get my brush. This is a Sigma concealer brush, F79, just to blend. Then I'm gonna take some bronzer on the brush and I'm gonna start bringing some warmth here to the cheeks. Same thing on this cheek. Then I'm gonna take that same bronzer and I'm just gonna draw it here under the jawline just to create the illusion of a sharper jawline. I'm also gonna bring some warmth to the nose and with the same brush, I'm just gonna tap and blend. I see that I'm, I need more bronzer over here grab your sponge and let's give all of that another blend so press it all along where we've put the bronzer for blush i'm going to use this one from juvia's place in the shade lily love and i chose this color because i think it's going to look beautiful with the look it's going to give me that sort of sunburnt reddish cheek you gotta watch out because it is as you can see very pigmented but it is a very nice option from ulta on the affordable side of things i'm taking my real techniques 407 brush and just going in and i'm building this in light layers because it is so pigmented that i don't want to go in with a lot of product all at once and make it super difficult to blend out later on I went in with another layer of blush to make sure that the camera picks it up, but I don't know. I think I overdid it this time, but we'll see. We're gonna grab our sponge again, and we're just gonna tap over that blush. And you see what I mean about the color? It really gives me that like sun-kissed type of color, which I love. And this sponge never fails. Look at that beautiful blend. Awesome. Now moving on to the eyes, I am going to use this Makeup by Mario Matte Palette and just pick a brown that you like. I don't want to go too light nor too dark, so I think I'm gonna stay somewhere around here. And I'm taking a Ruffer 15 brush, it's just a fluffy brush. I'm actually gonna tap this color here on my skin. And I like to do that just to make sure that I get the excess off so that I don't put a blob of color that is gonna be a pain in the butt to blend later on. I'm gonna place it here on the crease first and then just rainbow motions. I'm also going to bring it here to the outer V of the eye and again, rainbow motions. And notice that I am also dragging it out towards my temple just because I like that kind of elongated eye. Same thing on this side. Now for the lower lash line, we're gonna take that same brush we've been using, pinch it, 
use that same eyeshadow tap it onto your skin and then let's put it here in the outer third of the lower lash line Then with that same brush, I want to switch shades. I want a lighter color to put on the lid. So I'm gonna take my Sigma Switch and just swirl my eyeshadow brush on it so that it removes that eyeshadow color, the brown that we were using. And now I'm gonna go into this sort of bone color and I'm going to tap it right here in the middle of the lid close to the lashes. I might want a little bit more brightness, so I'm gonna try going with the white instead of the bone. Yeah, I like that. Sticking to the white, same thing on the other eye. It's nice to bring some brightness onto the lid because it creates a nice contrast with the, the shade that we put on the crease. And I'm also taking that white shade and putting it here, stamping it onto the inner corner just to get some brightness in this area. Next up is mascara. So take a mascara you like. I'll be using the one from Huda Beauty, the One Coat Wow. And I'm gonna put it on the lower lashes first. Now, before we put on some false lashes, I'm gonna take that same mascara and I'm gonna put it on my top lashes. Because even though I'm gonna be putting on the false lashes, I want them to have a nice base. And my lashes will just blend better with the false lashes if I have mascara on them first. Okay, so this is how everything looks so far. Actually, before we put on the lashes, I need to do my eyeliner. So I'm taking my Inglot 77, yeah, 77 eyeliner, and I'm gonna take some Inglot Duraline. I'm gonna put a drop of it onto the pot. And then I am taking this angled brush, number 762, and I'm gonna grab the product with this brush. Also very important to do this kind of pinch softly the the brush to get the product that's on the side the sides of the brush to get it on your fingers because otherwise it can make a mess on your eyelids okay so i'm just gonna look in my mirror with my eyes open all right notice how the line is not i didn't really start it from the outer the very outer the end of my of my eye i started a little bit before Hold on, I need, I need to hold the mirror closer to me. And that's it. I'm bringing the liner up to here, so not even to the middle of my lid, but I'm just keeping it here on the outer third of the eye. If you want to bring it in, actually, I am gonna bring it in. Change of plans, yes. Normally, I bring it in, so that's what I'm going to do. So I grabbed a little bit more product, but I don't want a thick line. Make sure you stay really close to the lashes here and draw a super thin line. Because again, I want the, to define the lash line without rounding my eyes. Okay, lovely. Now for lashes, I'm gonna take these Ardell 420s. I've used these before and I really like them because they look very natural, yet they do add volume to your lashes, so they're perfect. And for glue, I like this Duo Lash Glue. Most glues make, they give me like an allergic reaction. They make my eyes itch nonstop. And this one hardly makes them itch at all. So just putting on the glue and we give it a few seconds to start drying and become tacky. I'm back, lashes are finally on. You know how sometimes putting on these fake eyelashes takes forever, but there's other times that they go on just super easily and flawlessly. Well, they're looking good, but it took some time to get there. All right, so now let's move on to the lips. I'm gonna use this lip liner from NYX. 
Let's see, so this is in the shade Auburn. We're gonna do a matte red lip. So I'm gonna start lining. Then with the tip of my finger, I'm just gonna run through that line to blur it a little bit. And I chose the shade Vendetta from Pat McGrath. I love this red, because I didn't want a bright, like orange red. And it's not quite a burgundy, but it's still, I don't know. Okay, well, any shade of red looks good with a wing liner. But when I do this look, this is the type of color that I go for. And here's when sometimes I need the help of a brush. And I'm taking a very old MAC concealer brush. This is like 14 years old, you guys. We'll fix that in a second. I really took my time just defining the shape that I wanted. And now the almost final step, setting powder. So just make sure that you don't have any creases under your eyes. And I'm gonna take, let's see, oh, I'm gonna take a brightening powder. I like this one from Charlotte Tilbury. It's the Airbrush Brightening Flawless Finish Powder. And I'm gonna get it here on, oh, that was, that's a lot of powder. But I'm taking it on this triangle puff. And even though this concealer that we used claims to be self-setting, I do still want to put some powder under the eyes just to make sure that that concealer stays put. And also, are you seeing how it's blurring this area? Like wherever I put it, you see how like my pores seem to disappear. I'm not saying that they're gonna disappear, let's say on my nose, probably where, where my pores are the largest, but in this area where I'm using it, it's blurring out that area beautifully. With the same powder, I'm gonna just put it here on the T-zone. You know, the areas where you get shiny and oily the fastest. Now, if you want to keep using the same powder for the rest of the face, that's fine. Actually, we'll do that. So I'm taking this Tarte powder brush and I'm just gonna take some of that powder and I'll just put it everywhere because in the spirit of keeping the steps to a minimum, because I was gonna pull out my um, loose, translucent house labs powder, but we can definitely use this same powder around the perimeter of the face as well. At this point, just kind of take a step back and look to see if you want any more bronzer anywhere, I think. Because we already finished with the cream products, if you wanted more bronzer on, you'd have to go in with a powder bronzer. But I like how this is looking. Now for the final step, some setting spray. And this is not just any setting spray. This is the one from One Size from Patrick Starr. This is what Beyonce wears when she's doing her concerts to make sure that her makeup stays on. So this is very heavy duty. And this is a final look. What do you guys think? As promised, a simple, classy, and elegant makeup look. I paired it just with some simple earrings. If you liked this video, make sure to give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. If you watched up until now, thank you so much. I truly appreciate it. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.